Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now this is a build video for a Kiwi watch cleaning machine so uh, only applicable if you've got one of them or you're thinking of buying one. Now basically I wanted a watch cleaning machine but as we all know they cost thousands. You can buy old ones but you really take your chances if they work or not. The beauty with this one here is you're basically buying um, the files the file for the build, because this is 3D printed, so if you've got a 3D printer, it's great. If you haven't, you can always ask someone else to print it for you. I think the files for building are $99, and for the version 2 display monitor screen bit I have here, another $99. Now, once you've paid that money, you then get lists of every single nut and bolt and thing you'll need to build this machine, and it's wonderful like that. So you basically order it all from places like AliExpress, but all the links are in the build video as well, in the build um, instructions, I should point out. Now, everything on this unit is adjustable. As you can see from display there, I can control everything down to the how fast it turns, how many times it rotates until it rotates back the other way, or um, even acceleration point of these. Now, once you have the parts printed, um, you then need a base for them to sit down on. You can either buy yourself a piece of MDF, um, plywood. I decided to go a little bit flash because I found this oak on eBay. I believe it was a kitchen cabinet um, fascia plate, I believe. And once I'd cut that down to size, I think the size I cut it was 39 centimetres across square. Um, you can then use one of the templates which will have been printed off and this gives you all the screw holes for both the center um, turret housing and the heater module and also the first set of screws for your jar holders. Now once you mark them out you then drill a large center hole. You will be needing to put two lots of mains cable um, through this so do be aware of that. Now the baskets are all up to you. You can have round baskets, square uh, baskets, jars, sorry, um, are all up to you. I chose square, but one thing to be aware of is you don't want them too shallow. Obviously, you need the height of the jar for the liquid, but then you also need to be able to lift them out of the liquid and give them a spin so you get rid of any of excess uh, liquid on there. So do, do be aware of that. So once you've screwed these in place, you do get that, there's a little template in the top corner there which helps you locate that. You can then screw the center housing on. Now this center housing is what's gonna hold the steel large 30 mm diameter shaft through that. Now this shaft is actually hollow. So that's where your power cables from both your 12 volt and also your um, heater, elements are going to go through so that's no problem now once you put that all in position it's starting to look something like an actual unit here next thing the shaft well the actual piece which holds the motor in place which goes along the shaft you're going to have to put the motor cables through that unit now i've taped the ends up and pushed them through as i found this was the best way to try and get them all through there you might need a set of tweezers to pull them out but yeah, that's no problem at all. Now, the next bit of kit which connects to that is this kind of donut affair and the, well, it's like a locking ring and the actual thumb screw part for that. Now, you're going to order a butterfly um, wing nut, sorry, and that goes in this black unit you can see there. You press that in position. So it's a very tight, yeah, snug Fit, let's say. Now once you've got that in place you then screw that to the actual main housing. Um, so that's all pretty straightforward there. You do get other instructions as well but sometimes I find it's nice when you can actually see them as well like this. It kind of helps I find. So once that's screwed in you can then lower that all down onto the shaft. Now, one thing I did notice with mine, it was incredibly tight. Um, you can use some white lithium grease or something like that just to kind of get it moving because I do find, I, I found personally, it was very tight. Now, once you've got that in place, 
you can then put the top um, collet on top of there. Before you do this, make sure you put the round ring on first, um, the white ring on the bottom there, so that will then um, fit up to it. Now, when you put the top bit on, do make sure you kind of level it out as best as you can. You can put a rule across and then that will allow you to get that piece sort of level. This then allows you to actually put the display monitor housing on top there. Now, unfortunately, I had to um, stop there because I'd forgot the owl bracket which holds the motor in place, which was most annoying because it means you have to wait like another seven days for that um, delivered. So what I did instead, I started assembling the baskets now, but well, not so much your baskets, but the holder for the baskets. Now, what I did here, there's these little small nylon lock nuts which go in position. Now, I found a set of pliers were great to actually push them into the correct position because otherwise they were quite tight and quite awkward to do. One of the expenses, uh, expenses on this build is having to buy all the nuts and bolts. Now, I've yeah, because you can never buy three or four. You have to buy a pack of ten or whatever. So I might actually, if anyone's buying one in the UK, I can send them a pack of nuts and bolts for 25 quid or whatever. So bear that in mind. So once I had that, um, the basket holder ready, it gave me an idea how it would sit with the basket. But we're going to talk about it a little bit more later on. So at last, my owl bracket had turned up. So this enabled me to screw this to the actual unit. Try and get this as square and as level as possible. Um, it just makes life a bit easier. As you can see, you do end up with quite a bit of wire left over there, but that's no problem at all. So you can there's enough space to fit that within the housing. Now, the motor itself, you're going to have to screw to the... Well, uh, place it on top of this white unit here. And those small... Um, white parts that's what you're going to need to press the screws into now I actually I think I hammered them into place and they sit on the edge of the motor and you screw through into them so that makes it nice and snug now this is one thing I did after I didn't do this actually at the time of build I've done this a little bit later I had some sound deadening um, left over from a car project I was doing and so what I did, I used that to place around the motor. Um, to be fair, it doesn't do a heck of a lot. It makes it a tiny bit quieter. I'm not going to say that this is not a loud unit in any way, shape or form. The units we use at work and at university are, you know, they can be quite loud as well. But this isn't that loud at all. But I just put them on around the motor, just try and keep it as quiet as possible. Now, I then placed this unit over the top. Just be a little bit careful how the wires sit because you don't want to sn snag one of the wires. Now, these wires coming off from the motor, they will connect up to your display screen. Now, I messed up a little bit here because basically I placed the baskets on. Um, I basically had the long 8 mil shaft coming off the unit off the motor going down to the baskets but I forgot that the splash guard um, that should cover the top of the, the uh, jar schoolboy error but there you go so just be aware don't solder anything up until you get the basically this splash guard to sit on top of the jar to make a seal because um, I'm using an Alnar solution ammoniated and I'm not kidding it stinks it really has got a pungent smell only the cleaning fluid the rinse ones are, are no problem at all so you want to make sure that you cut the steel so that the jars are maybe 15 mil 20 mil above the top of um, the basket is about 15 mil above the bottom of the jar and you want that splash guard to be all the way down so it's actually sealing the top. The only time you do have to um, release it is when you spin the fluid off. So anyway, once I'd got that in place, um, it basically then I soldered up all the wires. Now, I use this four core 
uh, mains cable, it was okay. Uh, I put a little bit of sheath in round air, so just make it look a little bit pretty, really. Now, under what I did, because you get a power, the power unit you buy, I wanted that all to look nice and tidy, so I basically screwed that all to the underside of the base. Now, the feet which come with the unit wasn't tall enough to actually um, allow this, so I put a couple of more bits of oak underneath. That way, I just have a mains cable coming out from underneath the unit, so it all looks nice and tidy. Now, the wires which go into the actual control module, um, they are pretty straightforward to be fair, but yes, I even I managed to get the wrong polarity at one point. Um, my motor was making a strange, horrible noise. Just be aware, you'd think that they'd go from the top to bottom, A, B, and so forth. No, it goes B, A, and that's where I messed up. So um, once you've got them all in position, then that allows you to screw, uh, press it down and screw it in position. The LCD display monitor, uh, basically you just use a little bit of hot glue to actually lock that in position. Don't use too much, just put enough in each corner. And to be fair, then you're, you, you're up and running. Um, I say, it took, it took me a good few hours, but it's one of those things that if I had to do it again, I would be so much faster. So honestly, it may look daunting when you, got the, when you get the instructions, it does look incredibly daunting. But honestly, guys, it's, it's a lot more easy than you think. Anyway, I hope this has helped. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll always try and get back to you. Okay, then, all the best, guys. And most importantly, stay safe out there. Bye.